Okay, let's do this. I'm Amrita Tripathi, and you're here with me for a new series, Unlocking Lessons Learned, where I'm trying to make the most of actually a multi-hyphenate existence, um, to make the most of an eclectic set of interests and, you know, my near obsessive need to upskill in the last few years. I've actually seen uh, that I enjoy learning more in a conversational and easy way. I love taking notes as well, which is a bit of a mess, but you're going to see I have notes, all kinds of notes all kinds of notebooks <laughs> and i actually would encourage you to let me know if um indeed you're like me at all or i, I you know i just walk among you uh, the idea of this series is to take some of these concepts that i find come up a lot in conversation and um, try to see if we can crack on and understand them a little bit better i'm really doing my best to not use jargon um and i've said this before call me out if you hear me using too much jargon or you know you know talking too much about niche or not making any sense to you i'd, I'd love to get that feedback today i thought we'd talk a little bit about something that comes up often in conversation, um, it, you know, especially when you talk to um, women achievers, it's not just something that impacts women. It actually tends to be something that impacts marginalized groups. Uh, and you will see why I'm talking about imposter syndrome. I don't know if you've heard of imposter syndrome or if any of you have felt that you suffer from imposter syndrome. And we're going to talk about some of the theories on why it pops up and how, for example, according to a Harvard Business Review article, uh, we should stop telling women they have it, why that's the case. But let's start by unpacking what imposter syndrome actually is. And this is something I have felt I have had. It's something that pops up once in a while for me too. And you know, I'm gonna take you through some quick exercises also to tackle this uh, in the next 10 minutes. Now, imposter syndrome, according to the Oxford Languages Dictionary is, as you're seeing on your screen, the persistent inability to believe that one success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own effort or skills. I'm going to keep that up there while I ask you a couple of questions. And you know, you can make a note of this. Um, if you don't mind, you can definitely put it into comments. I'd love to see how this resonates, if it resonates with any of you. Do you sometimes look at what you've achieved in your life? Do you sometimes look at your own achievements and credit luck like you know somebody says oh that's it's incredible to see how far you've come as a writer it's incredible to see how far you've come as a journalist and you are like oh no no it's you know i've just been lucky or i'm so glad you got that promotion i've never met a better vp oh you know i'm just lucky to be in the right place at the right time i think what we're trying to figure out with this is whether you feel that you're kind of distancing yourself from your own feelings of having earned that success or achievement or accolade, whatever it is. You know, you could have been named a 30 under 30, 40 under 40, um, woman achiever, man achiever, whatever it is. And you might feel that you don't deserve it at some level. You might feel that people are going to find out that you're an imposter. You might have that feeling of like, oh God, like, you know, if I don't try really extra hard or I don't prepare you know, 250%, they're going to catch me out. So this kind of this negative, if you get that kind of vibe of like distancing yourself from uh, what you have actually objectively achieved, it's not just one belief, it's a pattern of beliefs that keeps you in fear about your own abilities, your own competence. And ironically, it's often held by high achievers or perfectionists or people who want to achieve things. So we will talk a little bit about what can help or if you're you know, leading a team, what you can do as a manager to help, you know, folks who are reporting to you feel, re you know, sort of valued, rewarded, how you can be a supportive manager. Uh, but a quick look at some of the stats. There was a KPMG report saying 75% of women executives surveyed have experienced imposter syndrome. 85% believe it's commonly experienced and 47% say it results from never having expected to reach the levels of success they have reached, right? So you could think about, for example, in your own career and pause this video if you'd like a minute, if you have ever been assigned a task and done it and been congratulated for it and been like, I'm just lucky, you know, or that um, I lucked out this time, but next time they might catch me out. It could be something like vo that voice in your head saying you're not good enough. You don't deserve to be here. It could be, you know, being in a group, in a meeting, um, second guessing yourself, not really saying what you want to say and just worrying that, you know, the team will find you out. Like I said, worrying that a team might actually catch you out for not being um, as good as 
they think seem to think you are but you don't think you are and i do think a lot of sort of negative thinking can actually uh, you know cascade on right we know that i mean your your self confidence will take a hit um you know you'll start having this sort of self perpetuating cycle um where for example you might just go from the i am not good enough to over preparing so the only thing that saved you is that you over prepared or actually i am not good enough but i was just so lucky and then that person stepped in and then i was so lucky and that person was like a nice person so you kind of you sometimes also tend to overwork to try and establish that your your you or your work um are competent and you can sometimes also be discounting your genuine talent and skill this sounds super random right it sounds super vague but i want you to think about any examples you may have had in the recent past and i'm i'm going to do this exercise myself as well when have i had imposter syndrome i can tell you i actually had joined a new company um it was a completely new role i had had a mid career transition moving out of journalism into the corporate world and um i was overcome with self doubt right i was like there's no way i can do this job and you know a year later i was like i can't believe i thought like that <laughs> it's not rocket science very few things are rocket science in fact but these moments of doubt can creep in and then they can kind of then start you know like i said spiraling or cascading and making you doubt or making you really sweat the small stuff like you know like you just get in your head about it so sometimes if we come back to this feeling of imposter syndrome kicking in because because you're achieving a level of success higher than you thought you could ever achieve it kind of pays to take a step back and be like oh wait how did this happen right and why would this happen so let's come to some of the factors for imposter syndrome right? why do i feel like a fraud when i am in this role it could be that i've very rarely seen women like me or people of color or a marginalized group i belong to i very rarely seen people like us whatever that identity you are striving to in a position of power right so and that's one of the big problems when companies or organizations are not inclusive or diverse enough so literally because you don't see people like you you don't feel like you belong there you might be the one and, and i there's so many of these examples you know you could just give me a thumbs up if you've dealt with this at some point been the only woman in the room been the only woman of color in the room been the only woman of color from a you know sort of minority religion in the room and on and on so that kind of starts make you making you doubt whether you be, you know belong in that room you deserve to be in that room and um you start feeling like a fraud you start doubting your abilities uh, and coming back to that harvard business review article the reason you know the the point was to stop telling women they have um uh, imposter syndrome the much harder thing to do is to tackle the reason is coming up so they do say for many women who are feeling like an outsider it's not an illusion it's actually a reflection or a res result of systems of bias and exclusion right so take one step back and if you've with me so far definitely would love a thumbs up or a comment for you to tell me that you've caught up to this point and that I'm actually not entirely incoherent or an imposter myself so taking a step back you look at it you're like okay wait hold on a second this is systemic there are no people like me this might be one reason i have imposter syndrome amrita is not rambling on for no reason so how do you deal with this right one is i'd like it again make a note of has something changed in your circumstances recently have you like me gone through a mid career transition is it a new job is it a new role have you just been promoted um to a senior position right have you got new responsibilities um there may be new things happening that are putting a stress or a strain on your own feelings of adequacy and those are things you can tackle right with help especially if you're working in an organization or an, in a corporate environment why are you feeling inadequate this is another thing to think about is separate your feelings from the fact this is actually one of the most helpful things to do when you look at how you deal with imposter syndrome you start well one is just remember who you are remember what you've done to get to where you are and this could be wherever you are in your career again talking about from the point of view um of a um sort of workplace but this could also hold true if you've just sort of graduated high school or graduated college and there's so many pressures and so on going on with you so one separate your feelings from your facts to remember you are not your achievements you are more than this moment in time right will you say that with me i am more than this moment in time i am more than my achievements having said that let's put pen to paper and actually look at what are some of the things we know about ourselves pen to paper we're going to talk about facts so when imposter syndrome comes up again you're going to actually have this list of facts to go back to and what's in that list of what is in that list of facts 
actual things that have happened. So for example, it could be your grade. It could be the promotion you just got. It could be your performance review. It could be an accomplishment or award. What have you actually objectively gotten in this role or your last role in terms of feedback from your manager, uh, in terms of your 360 feedback from colleagues, your performance evaluation, your experience. Some of you might want to put in even your salary and your raise. Um, so you start looking at and noting your actual accomplishments, right? And when you look at that list, you're going to start feeling a little less lousy about things, right? You might notice some things where you're like, I need to work on this or work on that. But remember, this is a non-emotional exercise we're talking about. So you look at your skills, you look at your work, and then you start looking at what you need to do. So for example, if you're like, hey, listen, I did not get my promotion this time. That's a big negative. I, you know, I missed the performance review cycle. My manager didn't want me to get promoted. Some of these things are obviously realities, right? And you can actually work objectively when you know objectively what the challenges are. So whether it's you know working with your manager to see how you can be set up for success next time or working to get actual tangible feedback. And by the way, feedback is a gift and an art and a skill. A lot of people don't know how to give feedback. That's a whole different ball game. But if you're getting good actionable feedback in even a work environment, um, or, and even if the companies are asking for you to do it, you could always go down with like a 360 feedback review, just Google these things, um, get them from your colleagues, your managers, you know, your points of contact, your skip level manager. What are points of feedback people have about you, your work ethic, your work, um, your workplace performance, you know, things that you can actually work on to skill up to the next level. I think the most important thing for this is to realize that these are not to do with feelings. Like I said, imposter syndrome is sometimes just because of those systems of bias and ex exclusion. You're not seeing people like you in positions of leadership. Um, there is self-doubt that has crept in. It's this sort of fear that you don't deserve what you have, but you do. You do deserve what you have. So think about this as a huge exercise now in self-compassion. If you were talking to a friend who was going through this imposter syndrome crisis, what would you be saying to them? write down some of these things that we we're talking about so just for a moment i want you to do this again this is the final exercise look at that list pause the video if you need to look at that list of what um you said if you've you know followed this video till now you've also put in some of the negative things you've been thinking and realizing that those are feelings these are facts and finally i would say you know we do need to start obviously distancing ourselves a little bit uh you know from this idea that one job or one career is the be all and end all of everything right so just try and catch yourself the next time you have some of these feelings going on uh, we had a really cool um, idea a couple of us i think it, I, I don't remember where this came from but it was to, to keep snapshots of compliments you get so you know even with the health collective we got these really lovely comments or feedback snapshot them put them in a folder and when you're feeling like you have imposter syndrome open up your folder and see what people are actually saying about you i think those are a couple of practical things hopefully that will help you deal with imposter syndrome you can definitely let me know what you think um did i go too fast too slow too jargony too long quite possible look at the look at the time um i will be back with more and we'll be actually finessing this a little bit more as we go but for the moment thanks so much for watching